Okay, so today we're going to look at what's called solving polynomial equations, and it's actually not that much harder than what we've already been doing. So let's take a look at our first example here. Um, if we had this polynomial here, I want you to just think about for a minute how you would graph that function. Okay, obviously, hopefully you can see that you would need to factor it, so let's go ahead and do that. It's a nice simple one that happens to have a common factor. Okay, and then you can see hopefully that that would be a difference of squares. Okay, so obviously now if we were going to graph this, we would actually take the x-intercepts, okay, so the x-intercepts would be x equals 0 and 2 and negative 2. So we'll just sketch those really quickly on the graph. We'd have our negative 2, we'd have our 0, and we'd have our 2, right? And then we know it has a positive leading coefficient, so we know that it starts out going from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1, and they're all zeros of order 1, so it would just look like this, okay? Now, since we needed the x-intercepts, remember that that is actually the exact same thing as being asked to solve. The only difference is the question would look like this. It would say solve, and then it might say 0 equals x cubed minus 4x. Okay, so what would we have to do to solve? We don't actually have to create the graph, but we would have to factor it, and then we would have to solve each um, binomial or each factor equal to zero, just like solving or being asked for the x-intercepts or the roots, okay? The key here is we're obviously going to use our factoring skills from the past couple days to do that. Now, you want to always remember to look for common factors, look for difference of squares, sum or difference of cubes, look for all the other special factoring techniques first before you use the factor theorem to do that. It should be your last resort, as you can see, because, of course, it takes a long time. It's a little bit longer. Okay, so let's try one. All right, so really important that we do pay attention to the form, pay attention to how I'm writing it. You will be deducted marks for form if you don't write the proper steps the way I am. So first thing we want to do, just like we did when doing factor theorem, is we want to label our polynomial. So let's let p of x be the left-hand side there, the polynomial x cubed minus 5x squared minus 10x plus 8. Okay, and of course we could look for grouping first um, and all of our other factoring techniques. I said grouping because there's four terms, um, but I can see very quickly that that's not going to work out in this particular case. Okay, so we're going to let P of X be our polynomial and we're going to try um, a whole bunch of different factors of 8, right? We're trying the factors of 8, so our 1, 2, our 4, and our 8, both positive and negative. And for me, it looks like negative 2 works. We can just check together here. We're going to get negative 8. We're going to get minus 5 times positive 4. We're going to get plus 20 and plus 8. And you can see that that equals 0. And, of course, that means then that, therefore, x plus 2 is a factor. So we're ready with our first factor. We can go ahead and set up our synthetic division. Okay, so we have our 2. We take our coefficients. You can see how this unit really builds, and we're doing the same thing kind of over and over again. Bring down our 1, multiply by the 2. We're going to subtract. We get negative 7. Negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. This becomes negative 10 plus 14, which is going to give us positive 4. Times 2 is going to give us 8. Remainder of 0. Hooray! Okay, and now we're going to write out what we have then so far. Okay, so therefore then, so far what we have is we have x cubed minus 5x squared, sorry, minus 10x plus 8. I'm going to return to the original question. Of course, we were solving equal to 0. Okay, so now let's take our factors, our results. We know that that factor is, sorry, we know that fa that factor is to be x plus 2. Our quotient left over is x squared minus 7x plus 4 equals 0. We're going to look to see if that factors further. So we have x plus 2. We have, hmm, doesn't look like it factors further. So we actually are ready to solve, right? 4 times 1 is what we would get there. Um, 
nor 2 times 2, and that's never going to give us 7. So let me just actually erase that. And we are ready to solve because it's actually factored as far as it can go. Okay, so if, of course, we solve this side over here, we're going to get x plus 2 equals 0. So x equals negative 2. So one intercept is negative 2. And then since this one doesn't factor, we're going to use our other methods. We're going to use the quadratic formula. So we're going to get negative b, which is 7, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that's 7 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2. And when we simplify that, we're going to get 7 plus or minus the square root of 33, 49 minus 16, all over 2. And that doesn't even reduce. So you would want to reduce that radical if you could using your skills from grade 11. So we have three x-intercepts. We have negative 2. We have 7 plus root 33 over 2. Obviously, if we were graphing, we would get that as a decimal. Otherwise, we just leave it in exact form. And our other one is 7 minus root 33 over 2. Again, those are just decimal answers if we were going to go ahead and graph. Um, otherwise, you just leave it nice and exact. You do have to reduce the radical if it does reduce. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, here we go with this one. Same thing as always, we want to look to use all of our different factoring techniques, and hopefully you can see that right away, this one looks a little funky, there's only two terms. Looks like maybe we could start with a common factor. If we pull that 2 out, we're going to get x cubed minus 64, and then hopefully you can recognize that as a difference of cubes. So I'm going to factor that as a difference of cubes. Cube root minus the cube root of 64. Then I'm going to open up my other bracket, and I know I square the first term from the binomial, so I get x squared. Sine is opposite. I multiply the 4 by the x, and I square the negative 4 to get positive 16. Okay? And just like I told you yesterday, you can test it out, but this one will never factor, so I know that it's factored as far as it'll go, so I'm actually ready to solve. Okay? And hopefully you can see here that you get one solution, one x-intercept, x equals 4. And then this one, like we said, it doesn't actually factor any further, so we're going to use the quadratic formula. And when we do that, we're going to get negative 4 plus or minus, okay? And we're going to get 16 minus 4 times 1 times 16, all over 2. And when that simplifies, we get negative 4 plus or minus negative root 48 under the radical over 2. Okay, and we can kind of stop there. Okay, now I want you to think about what that means. We were solving. We were solving for x-intercepts or zeros. Okay, so just to remind you that this actually means that these, what you would normally write here, is that there are no solutions. So these are not x-intercepts. Okay, we will talk more tomorrow about what those actually are. But really, we only have one what we're going to call real solution or one x-intercept that we would plot on the graph. And I want you to be thinking about what that means that would look like. We know it's a cubic function. We know there's only one x-intercept. So what would that be looking at? Okay, and we're going to leave it at that for today and we're going to practice this idea of solving and then we're going to make it a little more complicated come tomorrow. Okay, see you in class.